Hello everyone, hope you find yourself having a great day. Got a new Cinema 4D tutorial for you. This one has to do with improving the quality of your textures with vertex painting. So for this example, we're going to walk through creating a uh, basic landscape with the landscape primitive in Cinema 4D. And let's get started. I'm using Cinema 4D R13 and we'll jump right to it. Under your primitives, we're going to drop in a landscape object. We're not going to do much to it. We might increase the height of it a little bit. Uh, let's see here. Maybe I'll just go ahead and select it and hit C to make it editable. And I'm just going to scale it up a little bit so we get a little bit more ridges happening at the top. And I've got a material, the default that comes with that. I'm going to double click and I'm going to create a new material. I'm going to turn off specular, select my color channel, and under texture, I'm going to go and select grass. This is something I've downloaded just off of a Google image search, just a grass texture. And if we get a quick render of this, you'll see without the texture, let me put the texture on that and render it again. We've got just a bumpy piece of terrain with a grass texture on it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease the U and V length to about 80%. 80% on each the uh, U and V. Get another render of that. That just makes the uh, texture a little smaller and uh, helps it fit our scene a little bit better. Now, how can we improve this and give it a little bit more believability? Well, with vertex painting. It's straightforward, simple to do once you know the couple of little secrets. So while we've got it in editable mode, we're going to select our face selection tool. And we're going to go right up top under Mesh, Transform Tools, and then select Brush. We get new options available, different parameters for our brush. And we're going to be working under Mode, and we're going to select Paint. Here you can see we've got a brush that we can paint on our surface that we have selected and you can adjust the radius of your, of your brush up and down in size and the strength. The strength is similar to a feather like you might be familiar with in After Effects or Photoshop and so uh, you'll have a hundred percent fill in the center and then um, a less of a fill on the outside and it uh, is works in a multiply fact, uh, way in the sense that if you go over it and over it and over it if you go over an area twice with 10 percent you're effectively getting a 20 percent strength so I'm going to lower my brush size to about 10, and I'm going to up my strength to 100 for what we're going to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to paint on the top ridges of this uh, landscape, which might just represent uh, a, a high area in the soil. Not necessarily mountains, but uh, this might be useful, like if you're creating, a, a, let's say for example, for this illustration, a dirt pile. But you still want grass. So what we're going to do is I'm going to paint on these high peaks. And I'm going to increase that radius maybe to 30. Just to speed things up a little bit. Painting on the ridges. And you kind of rotate around and get an idea of where those ridges are. Again, there's one right here. And we'll follow that down to the ground a little bit. Looks like another ridge right in here possibly. connect them right here and maybe one coming out working its way down this way and a few more I'll put one right in here <coughs> excuse me and maybe I'll follow this one on out to the ground we'll split it off that direction so I think we're good now I'm gonna, I'll follow up with that a little bit by reducing my strength down to about 15 percent and then I'm going to paint just around here so that it has like a little bit of a fade happening. Just at the base where that soil is uh, tapering down into to some grass. Just to give it a little bit of variety. And I think we look pretty good there. Maybe a little bit peeking through right here on that little ridge. Alright, 
So we're going to render this again, and you'll see what we've got now is no difference. We've got our texture that we've applied. We've not made use of our vertex painting. So with this, we've created a vertex map tag, and here's where we can name what we've painted. I'm going to call that soil, and we're going to move right into editing our texture. And this is where we're going to begin uh, applying that vertex map to different textures. So once you've brought into your material editor, what we're going to do is go under the texture drop down and choose layer. And at that point, we're going to click on our texture. All right. So we're going to go right in to our shader and we're going to create a new one under effects vertex map. All right. So We've dropped our vertex map in, we've created a new layer, and its shader type is of a vertex map. What we're going to do at this point is click our vertex map, and we're going to drag in our vertex tag and drop it right in the vertex map slot. We're going to press our up arrow to go back into our attributes. And at this point, we're going to select our vertex map, and we're going to tell it which image to use to paint in the area that we've painted with our vertex map. And to do that, click Image. And here at this point, we're going to browse. I've got a soil texture that I've downloaded off of Google, Google Images as well. I'm going to click Open. And at this point, all that's left is under the Vertex Map Mix Blend Mode, we're going to tell it to use the Layer Mask Mode. You won't see anything uh, affect here. However, it will apply overall. So now that we've applied that, we can get a quick render. And you'll see where before we had just soil or just grass. Now we've got a, a mixture of soil in our scene that's applied in the different uh, opacity modes based on how we brush that in. So if you add a light with this, you can get a lot more interesting effect. Let me move that light up. We'll move it out a little bit. I'm going to also adjust that light's parameters to 90% strength. I'm going to add a soft shadow at about 80% density, and I'm going to up its resolution. And at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into that texture, and I'm going to select displacement, and I'm going to use that same texture that I use for the soil for my uh, displacement map. And I'm going to also reduce its strength a little bit, and I'm going to use sub polygon displacement all with all defaults. Now, so if we come in at this point, get a little rotate around, and zoom in on this, you should see a big difference in the uh, quality of the render, how we're blending in the um, vertex map information with an existing image to uh, allow us to tweak and specifically place different uh, attributes within an image to uh, give it a little bit uh, more believability and customization. Now you can add as many vertex maps as you want. You can mix and blend textures in with this. Let's say, for example, I wanted some leaves laying here. I'd simply download a leaf image. I'd create a new vertex map. Obviously, I'd give it the name leaves. And then I'd go into my editor, add a new layer, and uh, assign it the uh, mode of a vertex map, and then browse for that image for that. So. Just another way, quick way, that you can add a little bit of variety and uh, tweak your images so that you have uh, more customization available to you. This might be handy, for example, if you had a tree in a scene where you had grass out in a field and then beneath that tree maybe you had uh, leaves and soil mixture beneath the tree so that it wasn't just grass running right up to the edge of a tree. Uh, that wouldn't be very realistic. Yeah, obviously, under trees, grass grows not as well as it does out in the open field where there's sunlight. So, hope you find this useful and uh, have a need for it in any upcoming projects you might have. Remember, if you want to see more, comment, rate, and subscribe. Talk to you later. Bye bye.